Welcome to the Click Podcast. I'm Danny Watson, a mindset and manifestation expert and founder of The Click, a company that helps women overcome their fears and limiting beliefs to create a life and business that they love. Within this podcast, I will help you get clear on what you want, identify the blocks that are holding you back, transform your mindset and raise your vibration so that you can co-create magic with the universe. If you are looking to design a life that truly sets your soul on fire and manifest more success and abundance, then you are in the right place. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's episode where I am joined by the wonderful Nicole Eaton, who is the founder of Rock Your Combat. So she is an intuitive therapist. She is also an author, and she's doing lots of exciting things within her business, including the Combat Club, which I'm excited to learn a little bit more about. So thank you so much, Nicole, for joining us here today. Thank you so much for having me, Danny. I'm so excited. This is going to be amazing. Me too. Me too. And um, yeah, I've been sort of really exploring kind of your work and what you're all about. And I've been so fascinated by your background. So I've got a million and one questions that I want to ask you. But I think something that um, I was sort of really fascinated with, and I know that a lot of our audience will be interested to hear about this as well, is you're actually from a traditional counselor background. And I know that you've got really extensive education in psychology, which is fascinating. So as a traditional counselor, because I know some of that work comes into the work that you do today, but what did your work look like in that capacity? I mean, I also want to know as well, what made you want to sort of pivot to what you're doing now and what way your work looks now. But if we could go back to that traditional counselor role, What did your work look like then working with your clients? I was really lucky that straight out of grad school, I found an incredible internship at a not-for-profit. So I was so blessed to work with a little bit of everybody. I worked with couples and kids and individuals. I worked in a battered women's shelter. I worked for Head Start, working with pre-K kids. And I got this big breadth of work that I was able to do Um, and it was honestly one of the most beautiful periods of my life because as you're like coming out of grad school, you're figuring out who you are in between all of the career stuff. You're trying to figure out, okay, now I've graduated. Now I've gotten where I'm going. What does it look like for me? And I really found myself in love with working with women. I mm-hmm. love working with women. I think women have just the most beautiful open heart spaces and just hold space in hold responsibility for everyone and everything. And as I was doing this work in a traditional mental health counseling area, I would be sitting with people and I realized that I was sort of picking up information energetically from people that they weren't saying. And so I would say something to them and they'd be like, did I tell you that? And I'd be like, well, you you must have told me that. How would I know that? And it started happening so often in such big ways where I was able to pick up on big blocks or things that were going on in their life intuitively. I went to my supervisor. I'm like, something's wrong here. <laughs> like something, <laughs> something is off. Does this ever happen to you? And she was like, actually, it really does. And she started to kind of explain how her intuition worked within her job. Um, and so I'm a very logical person. So I, I don't just buy the whole like, intuitive psychic thing. Like I need proof. I need logistics. I'm very mechanical in that way. And so I was like, I want to learn everything I can to know why this is happening, how to intentionally make it happen. And just to learn more about energy in general. So I actually went and trained with a psychic medium for almost two years. Oh, wow. Learn and study my own intuition, help teach people how to access their intuition. And now I merge intuition, energy, manifesting in with traditional mental health, because I believe deeply in the process of uh, neuroscience and how the brain works and in just the basics of those things. But I also deeply believe in energy. So I think that when we can merge them and get the holistic approach of, okay, well, you're having a really hard time with ruminating, but there's a lot of energy around your head that we can move that might help you put these tools for your thoughts into practice, because I know a lot of people 
learn like, oh, my thoughts really matter. And I have to, you know, be mindful of them, but they can't, or they're feeling stuck around it or they're looping thoughts. And so having both areas of work and that knowledge under my belt has helped me make really massive, quick changes with people. Um, and I wrote a ton about it in rock your comeback, which is my guide to, uh, mastering your, your world to rocking your comeback. And yeah, it's been really interesting. Wow, that was really fascinating. I actually did not know that about you about training alongside a um, you know, psychic healer. And were you quite straight away like you obviously got that sort of nudge that I okay, I'm, I'm getting this deeper intuitive guidance. Were you kind of open to leaning into that more or was there any resistance to kind of because I know that I've got friends and clients who kind of had that but it's almost that fear of wanting to sort of go there and um, I guess, like the fear of how that will be received by other people. Did you ever experience that at all? I honestly, Danny, looking back at it now, I still am like, what? How did I dive right into that? Because I didn't have a lot of, I just knew it was happening. I knew it was powerful. And I knew it was helping people in a way that I wasn't doing in traditional mental health. And I needed to know more. And so I think out of that just deep desire and need to know what was going on and how do I actually like work with this? I think over the years since learning it, I've been more mindful, we'll say, mm -hmm. of I don't like using that intuition in a way that feels like performative. I don't like mm -hmm. when people are like, I want you to predict my future. I don't want to do that. I want to help yeah. you heal. And if you want, if you want to heal, I can help you. And I can kind of get into some of your deeper layers, but I don't ever want to perform as somebody who mm -hmm. is really good at intuition. I want to help you heal. And I have other ways to do it. And I have ways to teach you how to do it. But, you know, I got a lot of kickback when I started to integrate spirituality into mental health. I got a lot of kickback and I knew at one point I was just needing to leave the mental health field because I wasn't the right fit anymore. I didn't believe anymore that we had to go track back through all your trauma in the same way I, you know, used to, in the same way I was taught to, I realized that yes, we can address the feelings you have. Those are valid. Those are real. Um, and what are we going to do about it? How are we going to move forward? How are we going to create a picture for yourself? That's not exclusively this picture of the past that you're living in. And so it, it got really, it was kind of messy to be honest. Like, I mean, it's, it's like learning a whole new world of things that matter and trying to figure out how do I integrate them into my life. I had people who thought I was worshiping the devil because I started talking about spirituality more and the universe and God and intuition. So I had a lot of, I lost a lot of friends. Um, I had some family members who thought I had lost my mind and it, it was just really, it was a really challenging time. And there's, I think, still parts of me that I'm just constantly evolving. I think mm -hmm. using different language and words like universe or God, like just interweaving different things based on how I'm feeling about them has been eye opening for me to learn about myself because I'm always growing. Wow. That's so, so fascinating. And actually, it's interesting what you said about sort of therapy, about this kind of constantly going backwards because it can sometimes feel like it's this looking for a problem to solve and if you are constantly looking for something to heal from you're going to be constantly finding like wounds to pick at and it's this like incessant picking at the wound and it's not to say that that isn't relevant but there has to be an element of moving on from it as well and looking forwards into your future so it sounds that like you've been able to kind of combine both of those things very very well so it's sort of still finding the relevance in you know childhood and old beliefs and subconscious, but then using that intuitive guidance to actually think about, well, what needs to happen next and move somebody forward. So I love how you're combining those two. And in terms of you kind of like developing your own intuitive senses, so it sounds like it was something you were naturally connecting with any, anyway, but when you decided, okay, I want to get more serious with this so I can really sort of bring it into my work more, what did that look like for you? How did you deepen your intuitive senses? Um, I meditated a lot. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't know how to, I didn't grow up with any religious background. So I will say that like, I wasn't somebody who believed in universe. I, I didn't, nobody talked about that in my family. This was a totally foreign concept for me. And so 
even I, I was always curious about it. And if I trace my life back, like I remember, you know, being in a room and just having a high awareness of the energy in the room, like feeling sad if other people were sad, I had a high level of empathy the entire way. It was just that moment in time where I was like, there's got to be something more. And so one of the quickest and easiest ways to develop your intuition is to take time for you. Mm -hmm. And I do that through meditation. Um, but really being able to sit with yourself and getting to know your own energy is going to help you separate it from everything else. Cause I can guarantee Danny that you are probably incredibly intuitive, right? Is that mm -hmm are picking up the information from everybody around you. And we all are. And that's the thing I like to break it down. It doesn't, this is woo woo, but it's not, it, it's, yeah. it's mystical, but it's also the, the creepy vibe you got off your Uber driver. Like that feeling mm -hmm. that you walked into a place and you just loved it. Like those are all moments of intuition that we're not labeling as these big, scary, mystical things, but they're happening at all times. So meditation was a huge one for me, but I also was playing intuition games with my supervisor at the time. So she would take um, an object and she would put it on my desk and I would pick up the object and I would just kind of close my eyes and see what came. Like just anything about the information of, oh, it feels like just like a really warm energy. And this feels like it's connected to something really good. And um, I wrote about this in my book, but I'll share a little story with you is that one time she put this rock on my desk and I just like could not get what this rock had to do with anything. Like I'm holding it all day and I'm just getting like little images because when we're accessing our intuition, it comes in a lot of different ways. For me, I'm a big feeler. So it comes through my feeling of things like I'm not really a big visual um, person like clairvoyance. Like I don't have a lot of pictures in my head. That's not my thing. And if you're listening and you're like, I get a lot of daydreams or I get a lot of um, or dreams at night or I see a lot of movies in my head, that's a clairvoyant thing. That's one of the ways that your intuition tries to reach you. But I remember picking up this rock and just feeling kind of like this anguish with it and feeling like it had a connection to somewhere outside of the town I was living. I was in New York at the time. And I'm sitting in a meeting. I'm holding this rock. I am dazed out. I'm done with this meeting. I want nothing to do with this meeting. They're going over admin stuff and I cannot pay attention to save my life. And it just clicks. I saw a map of Europe and I knew that this was a piece of the Berlin wall. And, oh my goodness. <laughs> and I, I like ran back to my super, I like left the meeting. I ran back to my supervisor's office and I was like shaking because it was just this it was like an unreal moment. And, and I'm curious if you've ever had a moment that just felt so synchronistic and so magical that you couldn't explain it. There's no way you could have explained mm -hmm. it. And so I ran into her office. I'm like, Christy, is this a piece of the Berlin wall? And her jaw just hit the floor. And like both oh, of us. Wow. Oh my goodness. I've got goosebumps. <laughs> because it was just like this moment where I realized that I'm not making any of this up. Intuition mm -hmm. is real. And before I kept feeling like, gosh, you know, that's correct. But am I guessing that's correct? But am I making it up? That's coming to me. But why? Like, maybe they did tell me that. And that was my moment where I was like, no, okay, there's no going back from this point forward. I know intuition is real. So I would play these games, I would meditate. And I also just began to cultivate a relationship with the universe. I didn't grow up with one. So I started finding practices where I would sit and, you know, whether that was a meditation or just on the drive home and just think about what it might be like to connect with the universe, like opening up that door and just like, I didn't know how to talk to God, but what if I did? Like, what would I say? And I always joke that I do it in a very unorthodox way. I'm pretty like demanding and like, you know, could you fix this? Like if, if you could, <laughs> I a little better, but um, yeah, I think creating time to connect with the universe and finding a practice that works for you. For some people that's prayer, for some people that's um, meditation for some people, like I love the course in miracles. That's a huge book for me that resonates with my heart. But the only thing I will tell you is that no matter what that practice looks like, it has to be true to mm -hmm. you and how you feel. You're not going to be able to pick up my practices and be like, yes, this is exactly right for me. You might be able to be inspired by them, but intuition is a deeply personal process in your relationship and connection with source energy, God, universe, whatever you'd like to call it is deeply personal. Mm -hmm. And you get to cultivate a really beautiful, connected relationship with it. I love that. For women especially, our intuition is our superpower. And I think 
most women I know are highly intuitive, but I think the challenge I see is that ability to really trust their own inner guidance. And I think a lot of this is because we're so used to going along with what other people want us to do or we feel like we should do and kind of filtering ourselves down that when we're, you know, faced with our own intuitive nudges, it's almost like we don't allow ourselves to just fully trust them. So what do you think has been something that's really helped you to not only just receive that intuitive guidance, but have that absolute faith and trust that my intuition is actually right here and I'm going to actually run with this? You're absolutely correct. Women are so on it. And in, in men too, there are so many beautifully emotional men. Uh, my wheelhouse is women and women are so on it, but we're also so busy, mm-hmm. you know, and we're running and I don't know about you, but I know my daughter, my one daughter has softball playoffs and championship all week. My other daughter has three different chorus concerts. And then we have uh, my other daughter's birthday at the end of the week. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm going this week, right? I don't have as much time to stop and sit with myself to see what my intuition has to say. But what I can do is I can, when I wake up in the morning, invite it in. Mm -hmm. I can set the intention for my day that I'm open and willing to hear any information that's healing, helpful, or preventative for me or my kids. And that's Mm -hmm. such a really like quick, easy intention. Now, trusting it takes practice. And I'm not going to tell you that even after me, like knowing it was the Berlin Wall, even after some of the most wild experiences that I've had, that I still always trust my intuition. I think that it is a relationship that we have with our intuition and all relationships have an ebb and flow to them but I know how to get back to it and one of the ways I get back to it is through the meditation through the intentions and then your job is just to listen Mm -hmm. and what your intuition might show up as is an aha moment and I like to think of intuition as something that happens when you're not actively thinking about it so Mm -hmm. if you're in the shower and you get a download if you are uh, doing some writing and you get a download. If you are driving to work and you just, something pops in your head, it's a gut feeling. It's an aha moment. It's a random out of the blue. Intuition is not a trail led thoughts. It's something that pops in like, why was I thinking about that? That's a weird thing to think about. Mm-hmm. So what we can do and we notice those, and if we invite them in, I'm a big believer that when we invite in, we get to see more of So when we invite that in, we get to say, okay, well, I don't know what that was. And maybe I don't trust it or myself yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open a notes app in my phone and I'm just going to jot it down. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it the time of day that maybe it's nothing, but maybe it's something. And what this does is that you will start to see evidence of the way your intuition works. If you're willing to just honor what shows up, it could be about whatever, just acknowledge that you're hearing stuff, that you're feeling something, that you have a gut feeling, that it came out of nowhere. If we write it down, then we we develop proof, we develop evidence. And that's where we can start to say, okay, well, I had this feeling about, uh, you know, this guy I'm seeing, but you know what? I have 20 other things in my notes app and my phone that were accurate, that I felt that same type of feeling And those were all right. Maybe it's safe to trust myself. Mm -hmm. We're just building proof because our brain is silly and it needs proof. And intuition is no different. You need proof to remind your brain that it's safe to trust yourself. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing with the intention that I do want to like specify is, you know, I kind of said I'm open to receiving any healing, helpful or otherwise preventative intuition information. And Why I say this is because a lot of times people try to mistake fear for intuition. Mm -hmm. And I know that if I get like a bad impulsive feeling, it's probably not it unless there's something I can control about it. Preventative. That's their preventative filter, right? Is I know that anything that like is a worry that pops up or an intrusive thought that pops up isn't it because I've set those parameters of how I'm willing to access and hear my intuition Because a lot of people be like, oh, I just have these bad gut feelings all the time and bad things happen. I don't want to know if I can't stop it. I just don't want to know. And I'm a firm believer that the universe wants to work with you to help you know. I think that is that is a given that we can shape and construct our intuition to what we need it to be. Because when I was little, like if I trace my intuition back to when I was little, like I grew up across the street from a funeral home and I was constantly convinced that there were people watching me while I slept. Like if I trace it all the way back, 
But what I know now is that I don't have to experience any of that. If I have a moment that feels scary, I just say, I'm not open to this. I'm done. And that shuts right off for me. So it's not that we can't access those scary things. It's that we don't need to. They're not going to serve us. They're not going to prevent anything. So that intention for me is everything. It's everything for myself, for my kids, for how I walk through the world. Because I walk through the world pretty tight being calm, honestly. But it's because I'm not getting any intuition that I can't do something about yeah so it's almost like you're allowing yourself to be guided by love rather than being dictated to by fear which I think fear often tends to be that logical mind that over complicates things over analyzes things and I I love actually what you said about like knowing it's your intuition because it's it's not a product of your thoughts it's that gut feeling it's that just something just pops up and it kind of springs from nowhere Whereas the logical mind, it's often when we're overthinking things and nine times out of 10, that's going to gravitate to fear-based scenarios, worst case scenarios. So it's, yeah, I love what you've said there. Um, when it comes to then working with your clients, so you, you're blending together this sort of traditional counseling and your, your background in psychology with these energetic, intuitive guidance tools. When it comes to the more human psychology side of things, You've obviously studied extensively in this. What for you has been the most fascinating thing to learn when it comes to human psychology? Ooh, I remember I took a course on perception and I found it to be the most wild thing that nobody is experiencing the same reality. And and it it, it kind of is a little bit of like a, you know, a mind mess when you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> in the same reality, like no wonder we have such chaos when it comes to relationships, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the most important things I always try to remember is now and I'm like, okay, that happened with your friend. I'm wondering if she knew what you meant. I'm wondering how that was going in her head. And we kind of create space for the opportunity that, you know, maybe you guys weren't seeing things from the same direction. And then what do we do about it? Um, but I think one of the most powerful things that I've learned is just that our thoughts dictate what we see in our world. And mm -hmm. you could be having the best day and it just keeps getting better because part of you is like, this is a great day. And when you say that to your brain, it will start to look for information in your external world and in your internal world for proof. Mm -hmm. Same with a bad day, same with a bad life. We can really construct a lot of our reality that we're creating because it's our own through how we are thinking about it. And so if there's an area of your life that you feel really defeated over, it would be worth going back and saying, okay, what are the things that I tend to believe about this? Because mm -hmm. beliefs are only thoughts that we keep thinking. So we can go through the beliefs and we can look at them and say, okay, well, if I believe based on this idea of psychology, this, this neuroscience that my brain cannot take in all of this information at a time, it's just too much. It has to pick and choose and how it picks and choose is through what's important to me. So it's like, if you've ever gotten a new car and then you see that car everywhere, mm -hmm. it's because your brain's like, that's important. I need to find that in a parking lot. And same with our thoughts and our beliefs about our relationships, about money, about success, about our interactions, how we walk through the world. Um, that we can start to just look at what we believe and see how that's shaping our world. And we don't have to, I think one of the most important things is that we don't have to jump from a super negative belief to a super positive one. That's the issue is that people try to go too far and their brain says, well, you don't believe that you mm -hmm. believe this other thing for so long. You believe that you've been unworthy and you're insecure and you don't have confidence for years, I don't buy it. So one of my favorite phrases that I use is I'm open and willing to believe that this area gets to get better. So we can kind of expand in a small way that allows our brain to do a big thing, but our thoughts are so, so powerful and they're just controlling everything. So when we can stop, take a breath and say, what was I just thinking about because it was making me feel a certain way and the way it was making me feel was making me, you know, it always leads to an action. So thoughts are essential for what we see in our world. Mm -hmm. And I love actually that you've really explained that from a neuroscience psychology point of view, because I think the exact same principles are very much 
the rhetoric in the law of attraction. And something that I often get asked with is like, how, how do we reconcile concepts such as law of attraction if I'm not spiritual or if it feels a bit too woo? And I'm like, it's just a matter of how you decide to present the information. Because for me, the law of attraction is very much based in neuroscience in that it's our beliefs and our thoughts are shaping our reality. And we can either talk about it as the universe is sending us what we want, or we can say, look, it's because I'm focusing on certain things and therefore I'm going to start recognizing those patterns more in my life because I'm focusing on them. So no, I absolutely love that. Um, so where could people find you if they want to dive more? Because I know our listeners will be feeling like they've been left hanging on a hook and will probably want to go and devour way more of your content and information. So where is the best place for people to find you? Yeah. So um, Rock Your Comeback and Rock Your Solar books that can be found anywhere, but the easiest place to find them, to find me and all my information is my website, NicoleEaton.com. I'm also pretty active on Instagram and TikTok at NicoleEaton.xo. And I am going to give you and your listeners a code for the Comeback Club that will make it $5 for the first month. So it'll be THANKS22, all caps. And mm -hmm. that is my online membership space. And one of the things that I really did in my life was bring myself out of a financial turmoil. I mm -hmm. got married at 19. I had my daughter at 20. I was still in school. Uh, I was paying for daycare. I had no money. And so I, with the Comeback Club, it was really important for me to put as many resources in a space that was affordable for people who were like me 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And so the Comeback Club membership houses all the courses I've ever created. Um, it is journal prompts every Monday, pep talk every Friday. I do a new masterclass every single month. And it's a community of people who are like your listeners who just want to dabble and play and learn and connect and be reminded that they're powerful and they get to create an incredible life for themselves. Amazing. Well, thank you so, so much. That is wonderful. And we can pop that in the show notes with all of the details as well. So people have that code for the com Comeback Club. Um, wonderful. I am so, so glad we've been able to get you onto the show. And I'm so looking forward to this episode to be released and for everyone to get all of the juicy goodness. So thank you so, so much, Nicole, for being here with me today. Thank you for having me. Your energy is just a total blessing to be in. Thank you. If you are wanting to build your own successful online coaching business, make sure to check out Freedom, Abundance and Impact, our free 10-day business and mindset course for coaches and aspiring coaches. To access, simply head to wearetheclick.com and click free course in the menu.